Have you ever wondered how long it takes for building codes to be adopted in the US? Today we're diving deeper into where the whole country stands on adopting editions of ASE 7. Let's break it down. ASC 7 gets updated roughly every six years based on new research, new technology, and also lessons learned from previous disasters like hurricanes or earthquakes. The latest version is ASC 722, which was incorporated into IBC 2024. However, there's a catch. Not every state follows IBC 2024. Each state follows their model code IBC 2024, 2021, 2018, 2015, at their own pace. Some states may even still follow IBC 2012, as we're about to see. Take a look at this list. I researched every single state and tried to find what model code they reference, what IBC they reference, or if they have their own code. And I discovered that most states are following ASC 716, but if you see your state here, or a state that you know, that is referencing a different ASC edition, please let me know. Um, I may not have found all the local amendments or specific details. I also know that some states may have different amendments based on different cities. For example, California is a big state and they may have cities following different editions of ASC 7 based on their local amendments. ASC 710 is followed in some states, and ASC 722, as we can see here, Wyoming, and then we go up Mississippi, and then Florida, the state that I'm in, are the only three states currently that I know that are following 722. And if I bring up this nice graph here, you can see that 39 states are following 716, only three are following 722, and eight states are following 710. On average, it takes about 6 to 10 years for states to update to a new version of ASC 7. That means those states that are in ASC 7, next time they update, they will still update to ASC 716 and it will take about 6 to 10 years or even more, I'm not sure, to go to 722. So it's a long process. Some states just take way longer than others to make the necessary adjustments to talk with all the lawmakers, all the necessary parties, insurance companies, and everybody who may be involved with transitioning from one model building code to another. And I think some states do it quicker because they suffer a lot of natural disasters, like Florida, for example, where I'm in. We're hit with hurricanes almost every year. So it makes sense for engineers to push for updated research for the state of the art and most current data that we have on wind loads, for example. It makes sense for California to also push to have always the most updated seismic information because they are in a high seismic area. So I think it makes sense for these states to be on top of their code game. States like Indiana, Ohio, Utah, other states may, who may not experience as many natural disasters, they may just not be as inclined to changing what they've been doing for a while. And I don't blame them. It's hard to change a code and relearn everything from an engineering standpoint. Now, because ASC 716 is the most widely adopted edition of ASC 7 right now, that is going to be the baseline of my wind load course that I'll be launching in January. This course will include a historical overview of ASC 7, highlighting the key changes of each edition, and then a special module on ASC 722 so that we know what the current research is on wind loads. It's also aligned with the PE and the SE exams, which follow ASC 716, so it would work well for you if you're studying for one of those licensure exams. If you want to find out more details, you can click on the link in the description below. Updating wind loads is a balancing act. It involves more than just the engineering community, but at the end of the day, it's a team effort and we're all trying to make buildings safer for everyone. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.